Hello everyone, this is our third video in our series on scent work. So this video is going to be a compilation of some of the clips that I have from our training sessions over the winter on starting to teach an indication to Tennessee. So we've just completed a block of four or five training classes with Sandra who has Lothian Dog Training. So I've got some videos of that as well and some of the kind of homework sessions we've done but I'll put that in a separate video after this just to keep it all you know apart keep it clear so teaching an indication just means that you're teaching the dog a really clear way to show you that they found the scent so I want it to be really stable you know that they're not moving around really clear so that it's really clear for me when I should reward my dog and when I know that they found the order that they're looking for I started to teach this to Fausto, I don't know, maybe five years ago. And when I first taught it to him, I taught him to lie down when he found the scent. That became really problematic really quickly because as soon as I wanted to do a little bit higher hides, you know, I didn't get the same level of positions only as long as the scent was on the floor, of course. So then I swapped and started teaching him a freeze indication. So it just means that his nose is close to wherever the scent is and his body is still and he, he keeps his head still as well so he doesn't look back at me or anything sometimes when but i just kick this <laughs> sometimes when you see you know some uh, pet dogs do scent work they have a tendency to when they indicate instead of having a really clear indication maybe they just pause and look back at the owner especially at the start um or they start pawing the object things like that so I didn't want to put any of the parts together like searching for the scent before I had a really clear indication on the side so that they only start to practice when we put the parts together indicating in you know a correct or desired way. I don't want them to start just pausing and looking back at me when they find the scent because that can also be confused with behavior when they just do that behavior to actually ask me for advice like are we done, where should I continue searching or they start getting tired and they're not sure you know how to keep moving on with the search so teaching a free separately so that when you put it together you don't get any of the other behaviors in i started to try to teach a freeze both to fast and to tennessee by doing a sustained nose touch on like a hand target and i failed <laughs> i think i'm just terrible at doing it or i mean both tennessee and fast have really low frustration tolerance so instead of you know a, once they're solid on a hand target, instead, you know, when you start waiting for the duration to increase, instead of increasing the duration, they just start increasing frequency. So it just ends up being instead of touch for a few seconds, mark reward, it ends up being touch, 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 touch <laughs> instead, which is not what I want because then they start getting a little bit agitated as well because they're just like, why am I not getting rewarded? So. I hope someone can just comment and tell me how to avoid that instead, but I it took me so long with both of my dogs to figure out how to do it. And with Tennessee, honestly, I just gave up because she also has a tendency to just, as soon as she sees any human skin, just obsessively lick it. So her default behavior then, when she wasn't getting rewarded, just started getting really frantically licking my hand. So I thought, if I'm struggling to teach sustained hand touch, to my dog, then my clients are definitely going to take a while to teach that too. So I just try to find a way around that. So when I start teaching the freeze or just staring, which is what it's going to be primarily, uh, rather than always have you know sustained nose target on it, I put her in a middle position. So between my legs, standing up, put some food in front on the floor. The reason I put her in a middle position rather than on the side or in front of me is because she's always going to turn back and give eye contact to get permission to get the food. So by having her between my knees, she would need to, you know, really look up, turn up to give eye contact and she's more likely to just look ahead. Just had her between my knees, held her collar so she wouldn't move around too much because it wasn't really a purpose of uh, holding herself back or, you know, impulse control eye contact. I just wanted her to focus on the food forward and do it in stillness, you know, not be fiddling around while she did it. So started with that, just literally staring at food, marking and rewarding as soon as she did that. 
uh, started increasing a tiny bit of distraction, like just moving my hand around a little bit and seeing that she could stay focused on it so that she actually knew what the task was. We did a couple of sessions of that. It was really, really quick. Um, so much faster than last time when I tried to teach Fausto um, a freeze indication. So I think if any of our clients want to try this with their dog, that's going to be a really easy way to do it. Once we had done a few sessions with that, on the side of that, I continued, like you've seen in the other videos, to keep conditioning the scent. So just having a tray, you know, or the egg carton or Tupperware or yogurt pot or whatever you want to use, put the scent in the bottom, feed on top. Then I started to mark and reward her for just putting her nose in, like I've seen thing in the first video, could be the second one, probably in the first one that I did this, I'll go back and have a look. So when we had done a couple of the sitting and staring at food sessions, she started to offer a freeze behavior when I did the um, scent conditioning on the side as well. So I just started to increase the criteria so that in order to get food in the tray, she needed to freeze on it first, even if it was just a little bit. Same with searching for the Kong. I think we did this in the second video. I should have had a look before, sorry. Uh, so searching for a Kong piece, we've continued that on the side as well. So we're building her endurance for and desire for wanting to search by searching for food or searching for toys or searching for a piece of a toy, as well as conditioning the scent and now teaching the indication is the third part. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how we're putting all the parts together. But for now, once she was staring at the food, she started to offer the freeze behavior a little bit more with the Kong. So then I started increasing the criteria and waiting for her to freeze before she would get the reward when she was doing the Kong searches. So for the Kong, I don't know if I showed you last time, we've been using a tiny little, because I always get questions about this, what it actually is. So just a little piece of a dog toy. Um, hiding it, marking and rewarding when she finds it with the real toy or the big toy. Uh, we've been using, I think I showed you this last time too, but just to make sure, this for the scent. This is what I'm going to show you in the next video, putting the part together. We haven't been searching for this yet in the clips that you're going to see now. And for working on the indication on the scent, I've been using this huge pot with um, the scent inside it. So basically she's already swallowed several small comb pieces and a bunch of the q-tips with the scent on as well because she's a really mouthy dog. Uh, so when I'm practicing just indicating and I wanted to get the scent in there rather than just freezing on the food uh, just to help build association for when we're going to put the parts together on later I've been using this huge thing just to make sure, you know, she's tried to pick it up a couple of times too, but she's, she's not going to swallow this. So I've been using this uh, to work on the indication. So obviously it's really visual and it's not like she's searching for the scent. She can clearly see this, but it, it, that's not really what we've been practicing in those sessions. It's really just about can you freeze, how long can you freeze for, what kind of distractions can... I introduce like moving around while you're freezing. Can I move this around and you still go and f you know find it again and freeze on it again? Um, for the next video that I'm gonna put up, I'll show you how I moved from having this you know right in front of her on the floor and indicating on it to moving to this little one being hidden and indicating on that. But you don't have to worry about that now. So, just gonna see if there's nothing else I'm putting in this video that I haven't explained yet. Do, do, do. Oh yeah, I should tell you a bit more about actually moving from freezing on the food to freezing on this. So, at first, like I said, middle between my legs, food in front, wait for her to stare at it when she did mark and reward that. Uh, then when I started introducing this for the first time, what I did again, put her in a middle position so she knows that's the only time we've used middle for when she has to go and indicate on something ahead. I'm going to use it later on for, I started using it also for doing, you know, the foundation for send away or for retrieve, but anything that's focusing forward. But you, again, that will be a separate video or if you have questions on that, you can ask below. 
So, getting her in the middle position, food in front, marking and rewarding a couple times when she's focusing on the food, then I put this in front with the food next to it, waiting for it to start the food, mark and reward, release it to the food, started doing like every second. So every second time I would put food next to this or on top of this, mark and reward for staring, releasing her to the food and every second time just rewarding her, you know, in position where she was for staring at this. And then within, you know, a session or two, we just faded out so she was just staring at this one instead. And then she moved really quickly from sitting and staring at a distance to wanting to offer more. So she's like, this is where it is. And then she started offering a nose target anyways. I think that's it on indication for now. If there's something that was unclear or something you have questions about, then just send me a message. Or if there's anyone who's done this vlog before and who watches this and think or see already lots of situations where I'm gonna run into issues later on that I haven't thought about because it's just the second dog that I'm doing this with, then please let me know as well because I'm open to suggestions because the only reason we're putting these up is so that our clients can follow and try some of it at home, add some extra mental stimulation to your dogs. Hope you enjoyed it and let me know if you have any questions. Wait. 
Okay. Good. Cool. Okay. Wait. 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 That's it. You ready? Good girl.